As you say, and as you're hinting at, uh, criminal defense attorneys generally do not advise their clients to, to testify in their own defense, especially in a case like this. Um, uh, Sam Bankman-Fried, though, is not a traditional uh, <laughs> client. And as we know, anyone who's followed this story knows that he spent a lot of the, the, the weeks after the fall of FTX, um, and even after his own arrest, giving interviews, talking to pretty much anyone under the sun, saying all kinds of sort of half-cocked, uh, probably legally ill-advised things, including that he, you know, effed up. Um, and uh, I'm quoting there. Uh, <laughs> and and so, so, again, this is not a traditional client, and, and we're probably not going to see a traditional uh, defense or traditional testimony from him. What have we seen so far? I mean, has the testimony been so damning that putting himself on the stand or that a lawyer putting him on the stand is the best the defense team can do? I mean, I think, again, I'm not on the jury, uh, and so it's, it's always hard to speculate, but it has seemed from the outside to be pretty damning. I mean, we've seen basically his closest friends mm -hmm. and senior executive team all get up there on the stand and talk not just in detail saying that yes the crimes that the you know that the state is charging did occur Sam Bankman-Fried did them but producing essentially mountains of evidence showing Bankman-Fried's direct involvement so we've seen messages we've seen Google Docs we've seen these very specific accounts particularly from Caroline Ellison who was the uh, CEO of Alameda Research that was Bankman-Fried's hedge fund and his ex-girlfriend you know they they produce this kind of chain of balance sheets that Sam Bankman-Fried was was very active in. So, um, yeah, it, it, it has not looked good for, for what, the defense. What has been his, I guess, defense in this? What's he claiming or what's, I don't know. Well, he already there, told us. He effed up. There, <laughs> there are aspects of the defense that look uh, like a traditional white-collar defense. You know, a lot of times in white-collar defenses, what the what, uh, person who's accused will try to do is, is, is present as very complicated. There's a lot of ins, a lot of outs. You know, this is, you know, complicated stuff, and I was doing my best, didn't mean to, to commit fraud. There is some of that here, but there's also been an effort to essentially blame everybody other than him. And that's the part that I'd say is probably legally, you know, less well advised. He spent a lot of time in interviews ahead of this. And we've seen some of this come out during the trial, essentially blaming Carolyn Ellison for, for, the, for the fraud or blaming his lawyers or blaming, uh, you know, outside counsel or, and so on. And again, it, it hasn't seemed especially credible because uh, the prosecutors have been able to produce, you know, emails and so on showing that he was very involved. And also, you know, it's not exactly a good look when the CEO is saying, oh, no, no, this is just my underling's fault, especially the CEO who at one time, you know, had personally enriched himself to the extent that Sam Bankman-Fried had done so. He, You know, we've learned of a billion dollars in personal loans, you know, $300 million in uh, luxury real estate, and the list kind of goes on and on. <laughs> is there any ch chance, and I don't know that this matters in terms of the, this current court decision, but is there, uh, is there a chance that people who lost money in FTX are made whole because of, you know, moonshot investments that they made that now look like they may pay off. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's it's definitely too soon to say made whole. I think it's looking increasingly likely that some money, at least, will be recovered. Uh, you're, I think you're alluding to Anthropic, which was this kind of yes. moonshot AI investment. There's now, you know, there are rumors, uh, valuations being tossed around in the, in the tens of billions of dollars. Um, the, the issue is that there's a lot of these assets are not highly traded. So it's, it's sort of hard to know, like, if they started selling them, what would happen to the price? Where would they go? And even, even with a, a case of Anthropic, right, you can't just go and sell that stake on the open market. A lot of this stuff will, will take a long time to, to unwind. The economy can change and so on. The other thing is the question of whether or not investors can be made whole isn't really relevant to Sam bankman free It's not relevant, company. but, yeah. I mean, Matt Levine has written about the, if you defraud somebody and that person uh, never gets her money, Money back, um, you know, you're going to be in trouble. But if you defraud someone and she does get her money back, it's going to be less bad, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 perhaps um, you know that'll impact how Sam Bankman-Fried's legacy, you know, is is perceived and so on. I don't think it's going to have an impact on this case because again, the 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 jury isn't hearing this stuff. 
And again, the charges are, did Sam Bankman Free take customer money and gamble it? The fact that you gambled it and maybe won doesn't necessarily, <laughs> you know, address the, the, the central allegation. And again, there are other allegations here that, you know, we're going to have a second trial around campaign finance violations. Um, that stuff can, you know, he, he could go to jail for a long time. There's the Chinese bribery allegations. So there, there's a bunch of... These are separate we, trials? There are two separate trials, yes. So uh, oh. what's the timeline look like for this one? Um, so, yeah, so we're going to see uh, Bankman Freed likely start testifying today. Uh, that'll go into tomorrow, probably early next week. I mean, we, the jury could uh, begin deliberating next week. We could have a verdict as as, as early as next week, although uh, uh, it seems possible it could go on to the Are, are reporters the allowed in the courtroom? Yes. Uh, okay. The public is allowed in the courtroom. We have we have a team of people um, down there. They're, they've been reporting on this, yep. you know, relentlessly. Uh, you, know, <laughs> you can read it on, on Bloomberg.com at the terminal. Um, uh, general public's also in there. So we've seen kind of a, a weird rotating uh, <laughs> list of kind of crypto figures and influencers. I think Martin Shkreli was, was uh, in there uh, early uh, on. Uh, you know, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's it's sort of been, a, you know, a kind of weird reality show. Because, I mean, this really, a to a certain case. extent, I wonder, you know, Crypto is this an to what extent is this an indictment or of the crypto space? I mean, is it seen that way by people? Well, I think it's it, you know it depends who you talk to. So okay. you talk to people in the industry, right? They have been very keen, and you've seen the industry really like they have been some of the most aggressive people in calling out Sam Bankman Free because because okay. they want to make an effort to say, hey, look, this was a bad actor, you know, bad apple. Uh, he's making us look bad. Uh, I think in the minds of normal investors, in the minds of the public, right, that argument's a little harder because Sam Bankman Freed, his whole thing was that he was the most law abiding, yep. least sketchy. I mean, this is a world that has operated kind of on the edges of various laws in, in all over the world. So so again, it's I think it's really too early to to know how the what the impact is gonna be on crypto broadly. And I think some of that has to do with, frankly, the verdict. And 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 depending on what the jury says, I think will will affect how people process. I mean, can this. he dude you got to think that, um, you know, just because Bernie Madoff committed a big $65 billion fraud with a, uh, an investment Ponzi scheme, that's not an indictment of the U.S. stock market and certainly not of the U.S. dollar, right? Right, right, right exactly. Although right. I could see that because crypto is so difficult to understand and because it's not clear yet whether uh, much or even any of these coins are going to be worth something in five or ten years, people might... Uh, very easily um, conflate the two. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was an indictment of Ponzi schemes, right? And and the uh, and the crypto critics are gonna are gonna essentially say that there are, there are businesses out there that are operating in ways that ne aren't necessarily that different from uh, from the way FTX was operating. And this guy's facing real jail time, right? What is? It? I mean, it's it, he faces a potential life sentence. Wow. Um, the I, I mean, effective life sentence. Yes. It's going to be so many years that it would be you know he would be old or, or or deceased by the time he got out. Um, we don't really know. You know, of course, there's there's a wide potential potential range of potential sentences. Um, you, you're talking about anywhere from years to decades. And, and of course, he could he could be acquitted. Um, whatever happens with this case, I think there are definitely going to be appeals. Um, and there is this second trial, the second yep. criminal trial, which also carries significant uh, jail time. All right.